Well, hey, welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. I'm sure you've been wondering where I've been maybe for the last four plus weeks. And I just thought I'd show you some of the stuff I've been working on. So, first up is this cartridge that I'm uh, putting a factory crimp to with the Lee factory crimp die. 300 blackout. The cartridge I said I would never build for myself. Well, why did I do that? And just simply that I can make pretty much everything for this as far as bullets go. Uh, 308 molds, I have many of them. Uh, one specifically for 300 blackout from NOE. And I can powder coat them. I can, you know, of course, cast the bullets. I can lubricize them. I can gas check them. I can do just a lot of different things for that particular round. So, with all the... Um, insanity in Washington right now trying to blame guns for everything instead of the shooters um, components are getting well they have already gotten very very scarce so powder I'm good primers for now I'm good cases well you'll see when we get to this 300 blackout series cases I'm good uh, two different reasons one I made my own I converted my own 223. Now that's nothing new or revolutionary, um, but there are some lessons learned along the way that a lot of other people have paved the way, so I got to benefit from that. So I found a head stamp that uh, works well according to, there's a good list out on the, on the net that tells you which cases work better than others and some that absolutely don't work. So I learned from that, and I have a lot of 223 brass. And so I sorted those out and converted the brass. And we'll show just a little bit of that. Not too much, because just, you know, like I said, so many people have already done that. Well, then I was lucky enough at one of our military ranges that has a civilian shooting side uh, to pick up 500 cases, 500 factory cases, once fired or whatever, fired range brass. Um, and so I got those, and that was awesome. So we have plenty of brass for our uh, 300 blackout. So that must be, I have a lot of the powders already needed for this because they're almost the same powder, in fact, in many cases, exactly the same powder as the AK-47. And so I load for that and have for many years. And so we have some things we can try at this and throw at different bullets. And we'll start with jacketed um, bullets just to get the gun cycling and things running well. And then move into the cast, powder coated, lubricized, gas checked, all those different options and combinations in this round. So, should be fun should be fun. Can we make the 300 blackout a precision round? And when I say that, we've got to shoot consistently one MOA or less. Preferably, the target will be half MOA or less. And I think that's quite a challenge from what I've seen and what I've shot in 300 blackout. And especially when you do leg cast rounds. But that's what I want to do. Uh, let's see if I can take that challenge on and make it work especially then something that is affordable and something that uh, many people can do the same. So that's one good challenge. So let's take a pause on this. I'll finish up these rounds later and I'll show you the rifle that we built during these times. Now, again, like I mentioned, during the last four weeks, uh, I haven't been able to do a lot of shooting. You know, the weather's been really bad around here uh, on the days that I had off. Of course, the days I'm working, we had excellent weather. But unfortunately, um, that's just what it is in life here in the spring. And so the weather's not been good uh, the last several weeks, so I haven't been able to go out and do any shooting. So in the meantime, uh, like I say, what I went ahead and did was start on the gun I would never build. And that's 300 Blackout. So what I started with, I had a lot of the components, like maybe many of you. You have you built rifles, you have leftover components, maybe you have some new components thinking you might build something someday. And that's where I started with this one. So um, it's nothing, nothing fancy, although I think it'll shoot quite well. Okay, so we'll start with the top down. I have an Athlon Athos uh, 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope. This was on my uh, 308 F class gun. Well, thanks to my wife and Christmas time, I was able to put a Viper PST on that gun. 
and it's really nice, really clear glass, but so is this. And so this is an excellent scope. So this is really going back onto one of my Precision 223 guns, but in the meantime, it's, that gun is going to shoot open sights this year in a contest, so um, it'll stay that way. In the meantime, this is the home for this gun the scope on this gun and so yeah we'll be able to shoot some really we won't have to worry about the glass we'll put it this way for the accuracy of this gun uh, sitting on it then is the Burris uh, pepper mount this is the quick release that I had so much trouble with but I believe I've sorted that out and so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in this 300 blackout series as well um, you know build it from uh, other parts that I had left over upper part upper uh, parts kit a lower parts kit right now it just has a mil spec trigger in it but I'm just because I'm waiting on my back order with another LaRue MBT and if you've seen you know, the other guns on this channel you'll see that is by far the favorite trigger uh, that I have it's just such an excellent value for the money and fantastic trigger and so that will when it comes will be swapped out in the meantime I might not even shoot this lower uh, to, to keep the mil spec out of our accuracy issues. I might just go ahead and swap out my Grendel lower, which has the MBT and has the LaRue riser on an MOE uh, stock, CTR stock. And so that's what's on here too then. The LaRue riser it slides back and forth, you know, with the bolt handle, that sort of stuff. Um, it's a great, 20, they had them on sale, 20 bucks. What a great deal. And so that's just a nice feature. So you can uh, have, you know, classical buttstock, but then still have a higher cheek rise cheek weld uh, of course you can build foam up on that too if you want but this seems to be pretty good uh, the upper is a UZ something or other I got from Joe Bob Outfitters so not expensive upper but it actually is really nice it fits to the lower really well lower nothing fancy Palmetto State um, excellent value again for the money you know I can't complain I got a Magpul MOE grip that's you know one of the more expensive options on the thing not really expensive but comparatively speaking um, but again just you know basic everyday stuff um, the upper handguard here this is a really exceptional deal uh, I got this from aim surplus okay it's like 54 bucks for a lightweight very nice um, aluminum rail that is in MLOC uh, they have key mod too if you want that but you know just an excellent deal for the money and then finally a Faxon uh, gunner pro uh, carbine length gas tube gunner profile um, 300 blackout barrel and so you know it should be good should be a good barrel we'll find out you know like anything you always start off with you know so, some expectations and we'll see where they really uh, fall out um, yeah, other than that, I think it's, you know, it should be a pretty good shooting gun. I've, I've shot 56 rounds through it so far. And they were the first 56 rounds of our converted WCC uh, 300 blackout brass, converted from 223. Uh, that head case just worked perfect. You know, so you'll see that in this series as well. As soon as I get to shoot, uh, get time to get weather to shoot these, then I'll finish out that video and you'll see all that as well. Um, so they're pretty cool, you know. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of stuff on the channel coming up, though. I mean, an awful lot of stuff come up as soon as the weather breaks a little bit here, uh, because I have more of the Peterson 308 small rifle uh, primer brass work to do and shooting low development now, and that will compare it straight up against the large rifle um, uh, brass there as well, and other in other things, other uh, Lapua and uh, Winchester and Hornady. Uh, brass. We'll do straight up comparisons and just see how it does. You know, so far, you know, it shot well. It shot well, but the case it was one. It was uh, brand new brass, and so the case capacity is a little bit small. So we'll see now that it's been once fired. We'll check it out. Same thing with our 6.5 Grendel. I've got all this new Starline brass that I mentioned in previous videos, and I have some now that are once fired. And so we'll start the development with them now with the case expanded and you know, a little bit better internal volume. And so we have that that coming up as well. I've been doing the budget uh, five five six precision rounds, working with those. I have more of those. Uh, next up um, will be the Lightning versus Bob's Bullets. And Bob's Bullets, you know, pretty famous. Uh, Johnny at Johnny's Reloading Bitch did some really good work with Bob's Bullets. So we're going to compare them back to the Lightning because the Lightning just kicked Lake City's rear end all over. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't even close. 
on Lake City bulk five, uh, 55 grain bullets. And so we'll see how they do against Bob's, right? Uh, why not do another head comparison, heads up comparison? And then I have some others to throw in that mix as well. But those again are bulk cheaper bullets, not our more expensive match bullets. So we'll do that. And then uh, you might see playing in the background a little bit in this video, my other project. So when the weather is really, really bad, I have many projects, one other project. When the weather has been really, really bad, I also been working on uh, a tractor that I bought from my grandfather before he passed. And it's a 1948 Farmall Cub. Just a cool little tractor. And so I, I had bought it from him years ago when he was still alive. And unfortunately he passed on and, and I had it stored got it back out of storage and got it running again but like before i put it in storage when we put it under load there's a, a good blue smoke coming out of it so now it's completely torn down as you can see here and uh, getting ready to um, fully tear down the engine i got it on the engine stand get some measurements and completely rebuild it i mean it'll be new pistons new rings uh, new bearings uh, new springs new keepers just a lot of different stuff for that that engine and so we'll get it back to running in fact better than it was uh, i think because we'll raise the horsepower just a little bit in what we do so uh you know this cool project i don't know if i'll put that on the channel or not you guys let me know put it in the comments here if you want to see something about that and then finally i'm just about to finish the project of all projects the project that really um, frustrates me to be honest to a large extent I've been building a custom flintlock rifle for a good friend of mine. And I've already let him test fire it when it was in the white, and the final steps um, are quite extensive. Now, you know, it's it's one of these things. It's not the steps that are taking so long. It's my tendency for being too much of a of a perfectionist. If I built that rifle for me, I would have had it done. Because there are certain levels of work that I do that no one else will see. But since he's such a good friend. He's done such a good thing for me. I've been trying to make it perfect, and, and that is what's blocking me. There's just little things. Uh, and so the wood is all done. It's all carved. All you know, I just very, got a very little final sanding to do. Um, like I said, the gun's been fired. So the barrel, the touch hole, the breech plug, all this sort of work has been done. Uh, the barrel uh, lugs have been drilled and pinned, and so that's really done. Uh, triggers are done, adjusted, installed, and fit. And all that's done. Um, inlays. Now this is where it slowed me down a little bit. It has a very ornate patch box of brass and sterling silver. I made a custom sterling silver cheek rest uh, insert for him that has sterling and gold inlay into that. And so that took me some time to do because it just has to be right. Uh, it's for all the world to see and everybody's going to look at it. Um, and then there's other uh, brass and sterling inserts in the rifle, as well, it, inlays. I keep saying inserts from doing other stuff. Inlays in that rifle. And then I engrave it all. Years ago, I took some courses from a master uh, gunsmith, uh, John Chippers, and he taught me how to engrave. And so I've done rifles over the years now. And so this is all single point chisel engraving. You hold a little engraver and dink, 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 and you know. You have to be really good. You have to be really careful and practice a lot. And so I've been doing that. And um, hopefully it'll be quite a high level. And I'll, maybe I'll, I'll stick a picture up here to see one I've done in the past to give you the idea of the work. Uh, this one is better even than that one. And then the final step I have to do now is, is uh, put some engraving and gold inlay in the barrel. And so that's the gold inlay is something I haven't done except for into sterling inlays. Uh, but into the barrel... The big deal there is if you don't get it right and you fire it and it heats up, the inlay will come up. And so you have to undercut. Well, you're undercutting very narrow, small lines. And uh, that's quite the challenge. So I'm going to do that. We'll probably just do some very basic inlays in the barrel for gold and then do a few other things and, and finish that thing out. But that's got to get done. It's got to get done really soon. The target for that one is in the next month. Got to get that one done. And so. Um, when I'm done with that, maybe I'll show you a few pictures and, and uh, I have a lot of uh, photographs of the build, really no video of the build, but I'll do that. And once I'm finally done with that, I may go back and start building a rifle for me. I actually not built a rifle for me since 1988, and that's a bit of an age stamp here. Every other rifle I built has been for somebody else, family, friends, or things like that. 
And so it's time to build one for me. I may build a rifle, I may build a pistol. Uh, we'll see. Uh, for me, and we'll do that one videos on the channel so you can see a little bit. Well, I just love shooting muzzleloaders. I've always done it. My father got me involved in it from age 10, and I uh, built my first one with his guidance, a pistol, and we'll show you that on the channel too at age 10. And since, since then, I've been building primarily flintlock rifles. I just love the flintlock, the looks of it, the beauty of it, the grace of it, and then you'll see the kind of woods that we do. When you build a gun at these levels, I'll show you that there's just no reason not to put the absolute best in it. And so it's not cheap to build one of these rifles. But when you're done, it, you know, it's an heirloom. It's a true heirloom. And that's what I want this one to be for him. So anyway, I uh, just thought I'd show you guys a bit of things working on the channel. I mean, there's a lot going on. Uh, unfortunately, the weather's kept me really from... Uh, posting too many videos, finishing out some videos I have. I've got a lot of stuff ready to go, and we'll work on it. Um, hopefully real soon, next week maybe or so, most two weeks then, uh, perhaps we'll have that. Might even do a little video of a fishing trip. And uh, I've got the opportunity to do some walleye uh, fishing up at a lodge. And so that would be kind of a diversion from normal stuff, and maybe I'll show that as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, not gone anywhere. Just uh, weather and other things have conspired against me to really get stuff out that I want. But that'll be happening very soon. Uh, one other thing I thought I'd mention. This is an annoying part of life. A bit troublesome, maybe. But I got a chance to go on a fishing trip yesterday with a buddy. You know, the weather was okay. It wasn't bad. Cold, but it wasn't bad. And... Um, so I can't pass up that. I went fishing with Trippin. Come home, and I don't know if you can see that. That's what happens to my finger. Let me do it that way, a little bit better. Uh, if anybody knows anything about this, let me know. I think I may end up going to the doctor on this one. But I come home, did nothing to it, and all of a sudden that finger starts taking a bend. Um, affects the grip strength in this. I can't really bend it too much without a lot of pain. It looks like, you know, like, it, like I broke my finger, but I didn't, that I know of. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, just another challenge. Um, it's not going to keep me from shooting. That's my left hand. I'm right-handed. The trigger finger is good or bad as you might want to think as ever. Um, but yeah, what an annoying thing in life. So we'll figure that out. And uh, But that's not going to stop the channel. But anyway, as I mentioned, there are other challenges in life I'm sure many of you have to deal with. Um, I'm reminded of simple challenges like this because recently I lost one of my cousins. And um, what a great man this guy was. He had was born with some physical defects and um, never once let them slow him down. And if, if you knew much about um, him, his name is Jeff, uh, you would understand what a great man this guy was. Um, just mention that because this, this is nothing in life. And I'm sure many of you have much bigger challenges than that in life. Um, overcome them. You know, don't let things like that get you down. Um, it's encouraging to remember his, his memory, and uh, I'll never forget him and uh, what he's done. So anyway, uh, good things coming to the channel and good memories to hang on to.